It is my distinct pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Darian Cockrell, Mr. DC. He's Missouri's 21, 2021 Teacher of the Year, Horace Mann Friend of Education Award winner, and the recipient of the 2020 National Box Tops for Education Twilight Award from Chance the Rapper. He also created the Crest Fit Fitness Program that's reached thousands of people. Mr. DC teaches physical education at Crestwood Elementary School and is a role model for his students who focuses on creating relationships that support the importance of staying active and healthy. So at this time, bounding towards the stage, Mr. DC. If you guys can just give me a second, I actually left the, uh, the mic and the clicker. Sorry. Check. All right, so the reason I left the mic and the clicker is because half of my brain is still asleep. I'm gonna keep it real with you guys. Uh, the reason I am partially still asleep is because the last 10 days for me has been extremely crazy. I've traveled more the past 10 days than I have my entire life. I've gone from the Lake of the Ozarks to Jefferson City, from Jefferson City to um, Tampa, Florida, from Tampa, Florida to Memphis, from Memphis to Kansas City, Kansas City to San Diego, San Diego to Chicago. I've been all over the place. I got in last night at like one in the morning, got home, right when I tried to sneak in, my beagle, of course, if you know how beagle sounds, they're really loud. She was excited to see daddy. So then, of course, she had to go, go potty. And because it was, you know, one in the morning, she had to take forever. So I tried to get back home, get in bed and lay down. And then right when I closed my eyes, it was time to drive here. So even though I am a little bit tired, I am here, but I am excited to be here. And the thing is about life, there's going to be, you know, things that get in your way. You're going to be tired. But at the end of the day, if you haven't learned yet, if you didn't learn in college, we rally. No matter what's going on, you just got to rally. You just got to push through. Am I right? So I want to hear, hear everyone say, we rally. we rally. And I'm not talking about the restaurant rallies, even though it's good, or checkers, however you may know it, but we rally, OK? All right, so thank you. Uh, as I said earlier, my name is Darion Cockrell. I'm a PE teacher at Crestwood Elementary School, where I've been for um, seven years. Uh, most amazing job in the world. I absolutely love it. And I just love my students, especially, you know, elementary. If you're an elementary school teacher, raise your hand. Or two, two, three. Thank y'all, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for being elementary school teachers. One thing I'll say about elementary school uh, students is that, you know, they love you unconditionally. No matter what you do, no matter what you say, no matter how you discipline them, when they see you in the morning, first thing in the morning, they're running up to you, they're giving you hugs. And even when you're in class with them and you're just trying to give them all the best knowledge in the world and it's the most important thing in the world and you ask them to raise their hands if they have any questions and then they say something like, my dad has a blue jacket. That has nothing to do with what we're talking about. But we still love them though, don't we? We still love them. <laughs> so one thing I want to say is that one of the main reasons I think we're here is because we love our jobs. We love the people that we connect with. We love the uh, work that we're doing in this world. And we want to make sure that no matter what we do, no matter what we say, that not only are we better than we were yesterday, but we're pushing everyone forward. Because I think at the end of the day, we all have one common goal, and that is to be great. And to allow the other people around us to be great as well. So as you're here today, I want you to be thinking about this. Who are you? What do you teach? What do you do? And why do you do it? So just remember that why as you go out or as you go out throughout this day. Remember your why. 
and understand that teachers change lives. Anyone in that building has the ability to change lives. Hey, Mr. Q. Did you see that? Why would somebody do that? Please go into the classroom, no talking, quietly. Hey, Ms. Merida, how you doing? We need you inside. How do you think that makes us feel? I forgot my number. What's your name? Jordan. What's your last name? Carter. All right. Go ahead. School is hard enough. Come on in, sit down quietly at your desks, and begin writing. This kind of stuff just makes it harder. I said quietly, please. Who's talking? Is it you, Sophie? Don't let it be you. Don't believe me? Sophie. Please just watch. I'm not up here for me. I'm up here for you. Pay attention, OK? Now, somebody answer me. Somebody needs to answer me really fast. Every time we're ignored or yelled at or silent, the the teacher takes away what's possible. No horseplay, no running, and especially no talking. Moment Can by moment. Ms. Garrity, your students' behavior yesterday in the lunchroom, it was terrible. Next time, silent lunch. Did you hear that? Stay in line and catch a bubble. I'm not playing. If this is education, we're in trouble. Bye, Ms. McGarrity. Frederick Douglass said, once you learn to read, you'll be forever free. The way it is now, two of the three of us will never be able to really read. It doesn't have to be this way. Hey, Jordan, how you doing? Good. Good. Everyone we meet throughout our day can make a difference. I've been waiting for you to arrive. All the difference. Good, how are you? Great. Hi. Hi, Jordan. Bye, Jason. Good morning, Jordan. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. How are you? Good. Go ahead and put your number in. Talk with well, us. Not at us. That's OK. I'll look it up for you. Go ahead, sweetheart. OK. All right. Have a Teach good us day. what we need to know. Good morning, That's how we Izzy. get smarter. Well, good morning, Sophie, Janicia, and Jordan. And when you talk with us and teach us, give us bigger and bigger words. Now what I'd like you to do, children, is turn around and converse with your neighbor and discuss where the mother might have gone. Words that we can use to read and understand. She is prey for eagles, so she hunts at night. And that will take us places we can never reach without you. Remember, we're entering the learning zone. Now, how can we show our respect to the children and teachers who are working? We can walk quietly. Yes. OK, kids, so what I'd like you to do is continue writing your narrative, documenting your emotions, if you were the baby owl and your mother abandoned you in the nest. What can you do? Learn all that you can so that you can challenge us to be our best. You would have stayed and assisted them in whatever they needed. Share yourself with us and show us how to share ourselves with others. Give us courage. Give us compassion. Help us find our own voices so we can become who we are meant to be. Why would you want to silence us? So I showed you guys that video because I really want you to understand the impact that everyone has in making sure that this world is a better place and that everyone that we see finds the success that lies within them. The way you talk to people, the way you interact with people, the love you do or don't give, the support that you do or don't give can really have a positive or, in some cases, a negative impact on the people that we serve. So for me, being named Missouri's Teacher of the Year was a huge honor, but also a big responsibility. It was no longer just about the student success throughout the halls of my school or just my district. Now I had to think about everybody, all the teachers, all the students, and all the parents across this amazing state. I was now able to use my platform as a leader advocating to humanize education for every learner. A leader who tries to lead knowing that we are all walking billboards. Understanding that in this profession, 
We are always being observed by legislators, school boards, parents, other staff, but most importantly, our students. That is why it's paramount that we represent and lead this profession to the best of our abilities. Because we are more than just teachers. We're more than just educators. We are leaders. And leadership reflects attitude. So as leaders, you must remember that everyone wants to feel seen, heard, cared for, supported, and truly valued. Now I know that you know leadership can be demonstrated or recognized differently by all, but just for a moment, I want you all to close your eyes and think about a leadership opportunity that you've taken on or that you've witnessed. Just close your eyes for a second. All right, you can open them. In any career, in any business, if you know how to be a leader, you're going to be successful. Chances are most of you have already been a leader. For example, take a look at this list. I want each of you to stand up. Go ahead, stand up. As I read off these roles, I want you to sit down if you've ever been one of those roles. President. CEO, mentor, older sibling, parent. <laughs> See, I'm only halfway through the list and most of you are already sitting down. Let's finish the list and I'm sure we'll get to you too. Manager, <laughs> team lead, chief. I, a nasty landlubbers. Okay, um, have you ever been first in a race? <laughs> ever given directions to someone? Oh, I got one. Have you ever been the first to cross the crosswalk? There we go. Um, have you ever given anyone any advice? Made a suggestion. <laughs> Done service for someone. <laughs> Complimented someone. <laughs> okay, okay, you know what? That's fine, that's fine. You haven't been a leader. I'm sure you've seen examples of leaders. Do you have any older siblings? Okay, parents. <laughs> okay, um, have you ever been older than someone? <laughs> No. <laughs> okay, that's impossible. How old are you? <laughs> Have you ever had a teacher? Uh, uh, you are a grown man. How have you not had a teacher? Uh, you know, hey, me, I'm a teacher. Great, I am your example of a leader. So we all haven't been leaders yet? That's okay, we're here to learn. You may sit. <laughs> <clears throat> As the great Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu once said, leadership is what separates us from the animals. To be human is to be a leader. If you've never been a leader, you've never really been human and there's no point to your life. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I ask you all, how do you define leadership? Is it the action of leading a group of people or organization? Or could leadership be so much more? Sometimes being a leader can start simply by being the first person to be brave enough to step outside of your comfort zone and doing something that could potentially set the foundation for you to provide a better way for others to be more successful. Your family, your friends, your students, the communities we serve. The first time I was ever called a leader or viewed by others as one was during eighth grade football. I was a team captain and someone my team could count on. Now, although football is long over, it taught me so much about working with others. What I'm most grateful for was learning how to use my position as a captain to better my team. 
helping everyone buy into something greater than themselves, working with a group of people towards one common goal. This is something that I took into being an educator. Like football, as educators, we are all on the same team. A team that's working towards one common goal, being better, being greater than we were yesterday, preparing our students for their future successes because we are more than just teachers. Every morning when we wake up, we are guaranteed two things, a chance and a choice. A chance to make an impact in the world that we live in and a choice to simply do it or not. As educators, I truly believe that we are the leaders of our communities. I'm gonna say that again. We are the leaders of our communities. Oh man, this is a tough crowd this morning. Y'all gotta wake up for your boy, come on. Give me a little something, so I'm gonna say it one more time. We are the leaders of our communities. Thank you, Lord. Don't make me go to church on y'all this morning, because I'll do it. I'll bring it out. <laughs> now, I know that you know some of you are thinking, well, leaders, you aren't making leadership money, and that's something we're working on in the state of Missouri. And you might be thinking, well, I thought that the principal is just a leader. And technically speaking, that is correct. But leadership is just, it's not just based on your job title, your degree, or salary scale. We are the heartbeat of our communities that we serve. And we all know that without a healthy functioning heart, nothing else is possible. Leadership can be based off of your presence, your attitude, your energy, your patience, your perseverance, and fearlessness. We are the rock stars of our schools, the superheroes to so many of our students. We are known, well, I don't know about today, but normally we're known for bringing energy, but I guess some people forgot their coffee this morning, I don't know. Can we get a round of coffee? Ma'am, can we get, no, I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> so as educators, we can adapt to anything. We can modify on the fly. We can manage all behaviors, wear multiple hats, along with costumes, wigs, or whatever it takes to get our students to buy in to the importance of education. We are the reason why so many of our students walk through those doors. As educators, we change lives. Now, when I was named uh, Missouri Teacher of the Year, I had to go to our state capitol and be recognized by our Board of Education. And when I was there, I was sitting in the back room and there were all these different people there. And as I'm sitting there just kind of in awe of all these people who are standing around me, I'm just like, how am I here? You know, like, how am I here? I'm just a PE teacher from Crestwood Elementary School. I don't think I'm doing anything special. I'm just, you know, loving my kids and just trying to provide a better way for them. You know, a better way than I had. So as I'm sitting there, I'm just thinking about, you know, my journey up to this point. And, you know, all these words just kept coming to my brain. And what I did was I just got a pencil out and I just wrote a little poem. So I'm going to recite that poem to you all. As I sit here in this conference room at our state capitol, I reflect. I was never smart enough, but PE got me through the doors. I did not value the importance of all of my classes, but PE got me through the doors. I had behaviors and learning disabilities, but PE got me through the doors. I was able to graduate high school and be the first in my family to go to college because PE got me through the doors. I graduated with an education degree because PE got me through the doors. I won State Teacher of the Year because PE got me through the doors. Where I come from, things like this don't happen. I've learned through the years the true value of education and I'm living proof of the positive effects it can truly have on one's life. Because of the remarkable educators I've had the privilege to be taught by, especially my amazing PE teachers growing up, because they got me through the doors. Now, PE is allowing me to open those same doors for others. We are more than just teachers, y'all. We are life changers. So I ask, what... Oh. Thank you. What teacher impacted your life? Who changed your life? I'm going to just guess that the majority of us have had a teacher, unlike that guy in the video. So with that said, if you remember a positive teacher that impacted your life and you are uh, brave enough to share that, 
please raise your hand. I'll come around to you. Oh, look at y'all in the back. Yeah, boom, boom. Okay, I see you. Here we go. So I, what I want you to do is just stand up, tell us who you are, what you do, why you do it, and tell us about that teacher. Hi, I'm Cheryl Thompson. I'm the program director for Impact, the state's PTI. Um, I was a high school transition and K-12 teacher in Pacific. Um, I have since moved on to Impact, where I'm helping parents. But my teacher who impacted my life was my fourth grade teacher, Ms. O'Neill, who really was Mrs. Schwartz. But back then, in the day, they called all teachers by their maiden name. It was when dinosaurs roamed the earth. <laughs> she was, I had moved from St. Louis City out to the burbs of Florissant when it was still a cow town. And she made me in fourth grade feel like I belonged. She cared enough to take everybody in that class and make them feel important. And I knew at that point I was a teacher and would be a teacher the rest of my life, no matter what job I had. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Give her a round of applause. And you raised your hand, too. Uh, who you are, what you do, your name, and all of that. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Nakatia Clay. I am the mentor coordinator for Missouri Parents Act. Um, I, too, work for Impact. We help serve families and support them through the special education process. My special teacher, I will never forget her. Her name is Miss Teresa Tidwell. She was my freshman uh, teacher when I was in the ninth grade. Believe it or not, I was the class clown. Okay, I was the class clown. Um, and I kept the class stirred up, but she never kicked me out. She never suspended me, never wrote a referral for me. What she did instead was she saw potential in me. She put me, um, made me one of the ones that was over our journalism class and a newspaper. And from that, I grew up and had a, lo a love for writing. Um, and because of her, I have authored four devotionals. Um, and I contribute a lot of that to her because she didn't, like I said, she didn't just push me out the door because I disrupted her class so many times. She recently retired a few weeks ago and she reminded her entire party that I was the clown of her class, but she was so, she said that she was so proud of me, um, of what I've, I have become, so. We'll go one more, one more brave soul over here. We'll go two more. We'll go two more. Here. We'll go two more. We'll go two more. Here we go. No. Oh. <laughs> um, I'm Cheyenne. Uh, I teach special education in Steelville. Um, my special teacher was my sixth grade ELA teacher. Um, so I was that food stamp, free lunch. We had a different address every school year. Um, my siblings and I kind of just passed under the radar. Um, I was always had my nose in a book. I participated. I had great grades, but when it came to interacting with my peers, I, I wasn't that kid. Um, and I wanted to be a lawyer. I did not want to be a teacher um, back in the day. Um, the very first day of school, she looked at me um, after I had done my, you know, welcome. Here's who I am, and she goes, "You're going to be a teacher." And I said, "No, I'm not." And so. Um, Six years later, my senior year, um, I get pregnant with my son, and I am terrified. And she came to the high school, and she talked to me, and she goes, you know you can still do this. You know you can still go to college. She helped me get set up with every resource I needed to have a sitter during my college years. Um, and she goes, you can still go to college. You still need to go to college. You have all this potential. And on the day of my college graduation, she was one of the teachers that I invited, and she was probably the loudest person that cheered <laughs> when my uh, name came across. And she go, and when I walked across, and after the ceremony, I came and hugged her, and she goes, "Told you you're going to be a teacher." <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The last one, yellow shirt. Thanks, boss. Yeah, appreciate you. Hello, hello. My name is Andre Beyer. I'm starting as the transition coordinator for Kip St. Louis in August, my second year teaching, so wish me luck. Um, my, uh, my inspiration, my mentor, my role model is uh, Mr. Michael Hodat. 
I graduated from Melville High School. Um, I have disfluency, by the way, so if I start stuttering, just roll with it, all right? Um, I had a lot of trouble learning growing up. I have autism, disfluency. I had a lot of reasons to uh, deflect uh, why I wasn't doing well in school. And I used every excuse in the book and I had a lot of behavior issues. And Mr. Hodap was the first one to see value in me and help me realize um, that there is no excuse and that I just wasn't applying myself. And I needed more credits to graduate my senior year. And I was going from teacher to teacher, room to room, to be like, hey, could I help you grade or do, like, do something? Like, could I clean your class for a credit? Like, because <laughs> I didn't want to come back the next year. You know, they weren't going to let me graduate. And I went to Hodap, and he was like, well, you can be a cadet teacher. I don't know if they still do that, but it was basically like you would go through lesson plans and help grade and do stuff like that. And uh, maybe if you did well, like you could like administer a test or something, it would be fun. Um, and he was like, yeah, you could be a cadet teacher for my teen taught uh, intro, excuse me, intro US history class. And I was like, what is intro? What's teen taught? And he was like, I'm, uh, teaching kids with IEPs like you. And I was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> like, I don't want to do that. So like, I went from room to room and I was like, do you guys have anything? And they're like, you can take pottery four. I'm like, yeah, we have a four? How many ashtrays can you build? So I came back to him and I was like, fine, let's do it. And I think three weeks in, he let me teach an entire lesson on uh, the domino effect of how World War I led to World War II. And I did that for a week, and it was amazing. And I was bitten by the bug, and I was hooked, and here I am. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's amazing. That, you about to make, y'all about to make me cry. I'm supposed to bring, I'm supposed to make y'all emotional and stuff, but for those of you who spoke, thank you so much. I greatly appreciate that. Uh, you guys are just, you know, reminding everyone the, the impact that teachers have on our future. This is where it all started. As a kid, I hated school. I used to always act out and get in trouble. I joined a gang before I was 10 years old. Six dudes, 87 kitchen crib gangster. That was normal life for me. I was going down the wrong path, destined to end up just like my friends, dead or in jail. I started from the bottom and now I'm here. Missouri Teacher of the Year. But I didn't do it alone. Mrs. Maxville, Mr. Dunkman, you guys taught me the joy of the simple things in life. You made me excited to want to come to school. It's allowed me to do that with kids today. Just those hugs, those high fives, knowing that I was gonna be playing a different sport or doing a different game or activity, um, knowing that you guys work close with my teachers and you use PE as a, as a deterrent to make sure that you know, I was doing better in my other classes. Um, you taught me that you know, even though PE was my favorite class, that I, I had to use that same love and that joy and that respect that I had for you guys for my other teachers. And what I love the most about them is that they taught me that even though everything else around you might not be going the way that you want, they created like a different world inside of a world for me. I had reading, I had math, I had English, I had social studies, but I also had this different world that, that I could escape to that I can clear my mind, I can have fun and I can be a kid and I can just enjoy life. In middle school, when, I got, when the state took me away from my family, they found this boy's home that was up the street from my middle school and uh, this is where they decided to send me. So I lived here for about a year. I had a lot of different uh, supervisors and people who watched us in and out, but the guy that stood out the most for me, his name was Ken, I don't remember his last name, but big black guy. He taught me, you know, the importance of having discipline. Uh, he made sure that I did my chores so I can earn that money so we can go buy stuff and do things outside of the boys' home. Um, he taught me that, you know, it's okay to be tough, but at the same time, it's still okay to have compassion and empathy for people. And uh, man, he taught me a lot, man. He was like my father figure here because I didn't have a father growing up. And he was the first true black male role model that I had to kind of help me get through what I thought was the worst time of my life. But now looking back, if it were not for this place, I would not be where I am today because I learned so much here and I was able to shed all of that stuff that I thought was important 
Miss Haneke was the most outgoing, most empathetic, most loving, caring, supportive, um, enthusiastic. She could find that thing in any student that's going to allow them to be successful, that's going to push them and motivate them to want to be at school and want to be a better person. And she knew that with me, my hook was sports. And she used sports to get me through the door, to get me engaged, to use it as a deterrent to make me want to study and value education. Man, she helped me fight some battles that I would have never been able to win without somebody else in my corner. You know, she's seen the struggles. She's seen everything that I was going through mentally, physically, and emotionally. And she, I mean, she went after every resource possible to get me the help that I needed. She used her own personal time to dedicate time towards me to make sure that I was put in a situation that was gonna allow me to thrive. I, I owe her my life for that. These are just a few of those people who recognize my potential and put me on a path towards success. They helped shape the man that you see today. A husband, a father, a friend, and an educator. All of us have the power to change the trajectory of someone's life, to make a positive impact on our students. It's what I try to do every day. All it takes is one person, one interaction, one kind word to make the world a better place. I'm Darion Cockrell. This is my story. So I think a lot of times, you know, when people see me, you know, whether it's on TV, or I'm giving a keynote, or I'm just out in the world, they forget about, you know, the path that it took, that I took to get here. And one thing that people don't understand is that I suffered from a boatload of traumas throughout my life. I went through a lot, I seen a lot. I had learning disabilities from A to Z. Um, I struggled throughout all years of education. It took me almost close to eight years just to get my bachelor's degree. I'm currently back getting my master's now, and I'm not gonna tell you I love it. I'll be happy when I'm done with it, but it's still a challenge for me, it's still a struggle. But I'm still pushing through because I know how important it is for me and my family. Um, I was diagnosed with ADD, ADHD, anxiety, depression, and uh, it was a struggle. But despite all the hardships and all the stuff that I had to endure and try to overcome, I stand here as the first black male Teacher of the Year for the state of Missouri, which is a huge accomplishment. Now, that only happened because I had amazing people in my life that gave me love, helped me understand and know what trust was again. They were fair, they supported me, they held me accountable, they gave me jobs where I can hold other people accountable. They kept me safe. You know, in my uh, gym, I always tell my students I have an open door policy. No matter what's going on in my classroom, what's going on in the school, if you ever need support, if you ever need anything, please come down to my gym. My gym is your safe space. I don't care if it's in the middle of a lesson or what's going on. And that's been so huge for my school because we have a lot of kids who are runners. We have kids that just have so many different emotional things going on in their lives, especially after this pandemic. And the fact that they know that my area and that gym, my office is a safe place for them and they've been using it for that has been huge for discipline in my school and just providing that connection and understanding to the teachers and those students so they can better support them. I'm gonna let you guys read this quote. And raise your hand if you think it's true. Facts. Yes, this is true. That's why every day our students should be hearing these words. So I'm going to say it. I want to have you guys repeat after me, okay? You matter. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Okay, I'm going to try this again. You matter. You are somebody. You will be successful. You are smart. I believe in you. I will drink two cups of coffee next time. <laughs> now, another thing is, is a lot of these kids growing up, a lot of people growing up, 
there's different skills that we need to make sure that they're learning and that they understand because it's only going to allow them to be better in life. For me, until I got amazing educators in my life, I only had those hard skills. So I was very familiar with anger, rage, disappointment, neglect, hopelessness, abuse. Raise your hand if you know any students who exhibit those hard skills or any people, a lot of people. But it's up to us, people like us who love to serve others, to help them find and be able to use those soft skills, problem-solving skills. There are still adults who struggle with this. Raise your hand if you're one. Hey, I appreciate the honesty. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the honesty. Thank you. Can we get security to get them out of here, please? <laughs> no, but problem solving skills. Even at kindergarten, I have my students, kindergarten through fifth grade, we do something called the conflict corner. And what kids learn how to do is if they have a disagreement, disagreement or a problem or issue with each other, they look each other in the eyes, they put their hands up so no one feels like they're in danger or anything, and they talk through the problem. They talk through the problem, why it happened, why it shouldn't happen again, and what they can do to just find better solutions to move past that. It's so important that they learn those skills early because it's only going to allow them to be more successful and just connect and be better with other people. Also, honesty, communication, communication, communication. I'm, I'm saying that, but my wife mad at me because I ain't been texting her all week because I've been gone, but communication is key. Don't be like me. Communicate. <laughs> Communicate. Trust. And then most importantly, empathy. Just having an understanding of what somebody else is going through so you can better serve them. I think a lot of times as educators, you know, we don't always look for the root of the problem. Just because someone's talking too much in class, just because, you know, somebody uh, is upset or they're tired or you feel like they're not listening, it's not always exactly what you see. It's very important that you find the root of the problem so you can help them work through that, whatever is going on. They can be hungry. You know, they can have issues going on at home. You know, they can be upset about something that happened with another student. Instead of disciplining them, uh, them right away, help them solve whatever problems that they're going through. Those problem solving skills. So, because of those problem solving skills, because of all these different things, you know, I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a teacher. And I love the fact that as an educator, you know, I was able to build relationships with the community and connect them. I told my principal when I got the job, my number one goal was to bridge that gap between the school and the community. Because where I lived growing up, there was a huge disconnect. The students in the school did not understand the teachers who were to serve them and the Unfortunately, they did not understand the students in the school. So when you have two people who don't get each other, there's no understanding. There's going to be a lot of disconnect. There's going to be a lot of people being upset, being angry. And the reason that the school is there is not going to be there for their purpose. It's really only going to be there for discipline or for babysitting because no one's learning. All right. So I told my uh, principal, I want to build something called CrestFit. And what I did was I took the name of my school, which is uh, Crestwood, and the workout program CrossFit, and I created CrestFit. And what it allowed me to do was bridge that gap between the school and the community. What I did was I started working out my students in class. You know, in PE and health, we do games, we do fun activities, but the most important thing is understanding the true impact that having a healthy heart, you know, eating nutritious meals, things like that can have on your longevity. You know, no matter what you want to do in life, it doesn't matter if you don't have a happy, healthy heart. So I had to get them to buy in. After working out my students, I started working out the teachers as well. Now, as I'm working out the students and the teachers, I've created something that they all have in common. So now everybody in the school hate me. The teachers and the, the, teachers and the students, because everybody's sore, walking around like something going on. And that was the great thing about it. Like, you might not have had that connection with your teacher, but you see her walking in sore, and you give her the eye contact, Mr. DC got you too, and then you guys are connecting, you're having fun, you're being silly in class. And then I took it one step forward, or forward, and I started working out the parents as well. Now, what I wanted to do was create a space where we can all work together. Because at the end of the day, like I said earlier, we're all on the same team. Parents, teachers, 
students, all of us. So providing that space where we can work collectively to just meet the individual needs of our students was what I wanted to do and what I did. And it was so impactful for that community and for those students. So now, if there's an issue at school or an issue at home, those teachers already have that communication. They already have that relationship with these families, so now they can better serve them and understand them and know how to help and support them. Positive relationships. I don't care how amazing of a teacher you are, I don't care how important your content is. If the kids cannot connect with it, it won't mean anything. You got to build those relationships. You got to have those connections because without those, whatever you're trying to preach, whatever you're trying to get them to understand is going to fall on deaf ears. And good vibes. Raise your hand. I hope no one raised their hand. Raise your hand if you're that teacher that walks in or that person who walks in to work every day He's like, I'm tired, man. I don't want to be here. I'm not getting paid enough. What time is my plan time? I need some more coffee. Raise your hand if you're that teacher. Raise your hand if you've been that teacher before. Security again. Can, can we? That's normal. That's okay. You know, I love teaching, but there's days I come in, I'm just like, I don't know if I can do this today. But if you look at that first person, they are that light. They're bringing that energy. They're bringing that joy. And you want to make sure that you're spreading that light, you're spreading that energy, you're spreading those good vibes. Because all it takes is one person to be having an amazing day to get everyone else going. But on the flip side of that, it can also just take one person to be having a bad day and mess up the day for everybody. So as you guys are, you know, going further in your careers, you're working, you're doing stuff at home or outside of your house, just make sure that you're always bringing those good vibes and you're spreading joy. With that said, you know, we love routine, we love structure, you know, we love knowing what we are doing day in and day out because we are creatures of habit. But with that said, you have to watch your thoughts because they become your words. You have to watch your words because they become your actions. You have to watch your actions because those become your habits. Your habits become your character, and your character becomes your true nature. So I ask, what is your true nature? And does it change in times of despair? Does it change when you're met with resistance? So I'm going to tell you a story. That's why the snake is right there. There was a man walking through the woods, just minding his own business. And then he looks off in the distance and he sees smoke. So he went over to investigate. As he got closer, he realized that it was a fire. And inside of that fire was a snake just burning. So he reached into that fire and grabbed that snake. And the snake bit him, so he threw it back in the fire and grabbed his arm in excruciating pain crying, screaming, bleeding. While doing this, he still somehow found a stick. And using that same hand that the snake bit, he grabbed that stick, and he used that stick to scoop that snake out of the fire to set it free. Now, as he did that, he put his hand back over his wound, and he started trying to walk to find help. A man walked up and said, I just seen everything. Are you crazy? I seen you pick that snake up and it bit you. And then you still saved it. Why would you do that? And a man just simply re replied, it's in my nature. I know the true nature of that snake. I know it wants to harm me. I know it wants to be mean. I know it's going to meet me with resistance. But that is not my nature. And I'm not going to allow that snake to change my nature. My nature is to love, support, and care for people. So I tell you this story to let you know that I was that snake. And we're going to encounter a lot of people, a lot of students in our lives who are those snakes. But what is your true nature? Are you going to push them away? Or are you going to continue to love them, support them, care for them, and make sure that they continue to find that joy that they are hopefully seeking in their lives? So I'm going to challenge everyone here that despite whatever's going on in your life, no matter what someone's throwing at you that's negative, 
be true to your nature, even when you're met with resistance. Help that snake. Help snakes like me. Help snakes like you. There's a lot of snakes in this world just looking for someone to come and save them. Be that savior. So I'm oftentimes asked, DC, how did you win Teacher of the Year? And I always tell them, it's not because of my deep knowledge of my content area, although it helps. Not because of my amazing athletic ability, although it comes in handy. It definitely, <laughs> I'll be juking my kids. Y'all don't even know. I'm surprised I'm not fired. I didn't broke ankles left and right. I'm just joking. <laughs> um, it definitely wasn't from all of my good fortunes throughout my life. On top of all the hard work and dedication, it was my ability to be authentically me. Silly as ever, outgoing, a people's person, and being able to use my past experiences, both good and bad, to connect and build relationships with my students, their families, and my coworkers. Each of you can be the most positive and successful people that you choose to be, but you must truly believe it. You will have to put in the work and know that when, not if, but when times get hard, you have to keep pushing through, keep moving forward. You must think it into existence and see it through. Now words, words can be great. Yes, I'm gonna do this. I have these goals, I'm gonna do it. But actions, actions are supreme. So don't just talk about it, be about it. This is the show me state, all right? So show us, show us your greatness. Be kind. Be brave, be positive, but most importantly, be you. Now, early on in my professional career, I struggled with being me. I kept making the same mistake, doubting my abilities, comparing myself to others, what they are doing, what I'm not doing, feeling like I haven't accomplished enough to be amongst so many amazing people. There's gonna be different times in life when we all have those feelings of inferiority. But when you do, you must remind yourself of the king of the jungle. Now, when I say the king of the jungle, what comes to mind? The who? The lion, absolutely, the lion. Now, with that said, you must understand that the lion has never been the biggest or strongest animal in the jungle. It goes to the elephant. The lion has never been the fastest. That goes to me. No, that goes to the cheetah. The lion has never been the smartest in the jungle. That oftentimes goes to the ape. There's gonna, there's gonna be many times in life when you encounter struggles and have those feelings of inferiority, but you must not forget that you are all lions. You may not be the biggest, strongest, fastest, or smartest person in the room, but you are strong. You have a strong mindset, the most powerful mindset in the jungle, a mindset that allows you to stay focused on your intentions instead of being consumed by negative thoughts. A lion is in complete control of his or her life. The lion does not accept scraps and does not get told what to do or where to go. The lion goes about his business fearlessly with extreme competence. It's the mentality of the lion that makes it the king of the jungle. So let me hear y'all roar. Larry, come on. Can we, next time, we gotta do some sound effects or something. You can help him out. By roar, what I mean is R-O-A-R, R, respect and responsibility. Be respectful of others and responsible for what you do and say each and every day. O, opportunity. Recognize opportunities when they come your way and take full advantage of them. A, ambition. Never lose that desire and determination to want to achieve more. And one of my favorites, reflect. Self-reflection is one of the best ways that you can shift your mindset, increase positivity in your life, and discover a greater connection to yourself. What you have or have yet to accomplish is what makes all of you amazing people, amazing educators. Whether you're starting your first year of teaching or you've been teaching for 20 plus years, your thirst for more knowledge, your drive to want to accomplish more along with the passion love and support that you all share for your students and the people that you serve is why you are here today. Thank you all for accepting the challenge and choosing to be educators, choosing to serve others. 
I look forward to seeing you all continue to make excellent, strong connections, building trust and relationships, and making sure that every person that you touch finds the success that lies within them. Good luck to you all, and remember, we're more than just educators. We're more than just regular people. We are life changers. So continue to change lives. Thank you.